Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, so couldn't have asked for a better segue leading into this. Uh, I was just telling someone, uh, talking about using satellite data to reduce and enforce illegal fishing, uh, unreported, unregulated fishing, is something we've actually had a discussion about in the last two weeks or so. Um, there is some really cool potential for AI and machine learning to contribute to that. So perfect segue for this. Uh, so as you mentioned, my name is Shane Glass. I am the project manager for NOAA's Big Data Project. I am allowed to say that as I think the federal government is still open until next week. So I, I am allowed to say that I'm, I'm with NOAA. Um, I have something that makes me very special compared to this morning's speakers. I have never been to space and I've never sent anything to space. So that really makes me unique, uh, which is not something that's happened to me before. So that's cool. Um, so the Big Data Project is, is NOAA's way of acknowledging that our, our Earth science and our Earth observations are inherently valuable, and we recognize that. Uh, they're created for a very specific purpose, for NOAA's kind of mission, right? And sometimes I know we kind of get stuck in the blinders a little bit and don't realize that there is life outside of our research uh, and that this data has value outside of that. So the mission here is to kind of unlock some of that value by making it uh, more accessible and more usable. Uh, so what we have here is kind of the puzzle that we call the big data project. Uh, it is this really complex, messy business kind of space that we get into. Uh, so the top left there, obviously we have NOAA. NOAA brings their uh, data expertise and the stewardship to the data. Uh, we have our creative collaborators, so the five partners that we're working with. Uh, that's a cooperative research and development agreement. So that's Amazon Web Services, Microsoft's Azure, uh, Google Cloud Platform, IBM, and a uh, nonprofit from the University of Chicago, the Open Commons Consortium. Uh, we have the end user down there in the bottom left, and that's the person that is, is probably sitting in this room today. And that's the person that, in my opinion, is, has to go through too many steps to get to know his data. Um, if, if you've ever tried to use NOAA's data, you better know what you're looking for or else you're going to have a hard time using it. And in my opinion, that's wrong. And that's, that's not optimal. So let's get to a better place with that. Um, you have to know which FTP site to go to, which data portal to go to. Um, not too long ago, there was a study commissioned within NOAA, and the, the study was to determine the number of data portals that exist within NOAA data. And we said, hey, great. Uh, go out and, and come back and tell us the number. And they came back and said, we have no idea how many data portals there are. We said, yeah, we know. That's kind of why we asked you to figure it out. They said, no, no, you don't understand. There's so many and they're so hard to find that we really can't tell you how many there are. Um, and so our, our mission a little bit is to work with these cloud collaborators to create one central portal, not portal, but platform that allows people to more easily access and build on top of these products. Uh, the big part that we missed out of this initially was in the bottom right, this, this third party partner. Then uh, that's the people that build the value added services on top of this. So under Acreda, uh, we are not paying the cloud, cl cloud collaborators a dime. And normally in the federal government, you'd say, oh my gosh, my project doesn't have any funding. Uh, this is so terrible. Um, right now we're saying, hey, this is great. We don't have any funding, so we can do what we want. And you can only get in so much trouble. Uh, but what that means is that our collaborators are taking on a lot of risk because there is some inherent cost for them to take this data and to put it in the cloud. Uh, there's some networking costs, some storage costs that they're absorbing. So by bringing a major third party partner, I'll give an example of this a little bit later, uh, they helped mitigate some of that risk for our collaborators and help kind of facilitate the process. What we found is that they're really critical to this process. And so that's part of this business experiment is we're learning how to make this work. So it's just some key points. I'll kind of glance over these real quickly. Uh, I know this is a lightning talk, and as I talk with the NOAA, they say, oh gosh, lightning, we love lightning. We have all these great visuals. It's, no, it's kind of a metaphor. Um, so keeping in mind the lightning talk, I'll kind of move through these quickly. Um, so it's, it's an augmentation. Uh, NOAA's current data services aren't going away under the current project. Uh, it's the three-year agreement. The current agreement expires in April of 2018. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we are not planning on replacing any current products, uh, just augmenting what we have now. Uh, we mentioned that it is a credo research, so it's uh, totally R&D, uh, best effort. There's no guaranteed level of services at this time. Uh, and the data remains free and open. That's pretty critical for us. Uh, that's NOAA's data policy. Uh, according to the new chief data officer, Ed Kearns, uh, the director of our project, 
Uh, NOAA's data is to remain full, free, and open. And we feel really good about that because it, it brings a lot of value and it brings a lot of uh, innovation to the space. And ultimately, we're in the Department of Commerce. So we want to facilitate as much economic incentive as we can. Uh, so the original data is free to download through our collaborators. So this is a big problem that a lot of people uh, in the government space are chipping over right now, uh, just like this cable I'm chipping over, is the egress cost. How do we deal with egress costs? And so under our current agreement, there are no egress costs to be paid by anybody. The original data can be accessed at no cost to the end user. Uh, but what that means is that someone needs to make money somewhere or these commercial companies aren't going to keep doing this. So the goal is let's bring in these value-added product creators and let's have them generate some, some value for them. And when they come in and compute and buy processing time on these platforms, that's really where we're generating the value. Uh, done at no net cost to the American taxpayer. Uh, I love that. That's one of my favorite things. And fair and level access. So any data uh, that we make available to one collaborator, we offer it to all collaborators. Uh, they don't all have to take it, but we make it offer, we offer and make it available to them. So this is kind of this big hand over the world concept that we talk about. Um, creating a, a platform of NOAA data and place where NOAA data can be computed on as opposed to creating these individual portals. Uh, and the keys really are combining these resources. So NOAA's open data and the subject matter expertise, uh, the commercial industry's infrastructure expertise and their IT expertise and a fair and level playing field in which everyone has the same access to the data. So why are we interested in this, we being NOAA? Um, our da our data is really valuable. Um, and that's great, but that has a cost. Um, it costs money to build IT systems. It costs money to maintain them. It costs money to run them. And so we want to kind of keep up with this uh, exponential curve that represents our demand. The problem is we don't have an exponential curve increase for budget. So we need to find a new way that's going to scale a little better to do that. And this is kind of our way of figuring out if this works. Uh, mentioned that exponential curve. So this is up into FY18. You can see it's roughly six petabytes of data access. Uh, that six petabytes of data is now down here. Um, so you can see going into the future, uh, particularly as NASA helps us out by launching uh, goes R, which is now in the air, uh, goes S, goes T, goes U, as well as SNPP, which is supposed to come, I believe, later this year. There's going to be a lot of data. There's going to be a lot of demand for the data. So how do we keep up with this demand for the data, and how do we get these benefits out? Um, making the data easier to get to, which is not very easy to do right now, in my opinion. Uh, reducing the burden on NOAA systems, while also simultaneously creating these new business opportunities. Uh, so the example we have here, I'll breeze over this real quick, is uh, the NextRad Level 2 data. This is a major weather radar product. Um, this is taking the entire archive and making it available through AWS's cloud platform. And the big thing here is we've created a single point of access for both archived and real-time data. It's the first time that's been done. Uh, we mentioned those third-party collaborators. The Climate Corporation uh, came in and provided a lot, bought a lot of that processing, uh, as well as Unidata uh, were huge keys to making this successful. Uh, you can see here real quick, 80% of new downloads are going to AWS as we have a redirect up on our site. It says you can still get it from us, but if you wanted to hack a lot faster, here's some other uh, options. Uh, slide's a little outdated. I'd say the number is a little closer to 50% of the data staying on Amazon, but that's how Amazon's making money in this. And if Amazon's not making money as a company, they're going to move on. And so we understand that. Uh, but the end user wins because they get access to this data in hours or days as opposed to weeks or months, uh, accessing it through the current uh, NOAA systems. Uh, data usage is up 2.3 times, it's a 130% increase, uh, while the NCEI, that's NOAA server loads, are down 50%. Uh, this is a, f we kind of think this actually represents the baseline of other data sets because the next right level two archive is a very specific, very difficult to use file format. We think as we get some of these new, more modern file formats available in the cloud, that this will represent a baseline and a minimum, hopefully, as opposed to uh, a maximum. Uh, kind of looking at that increase in usage, you can see to the left of that black line is prior to the data being transferred, to the right is uh, data access after it was transferred. The green bars represent uh, access through AWS, the blue representing access through NOAA. So we can see most of the NOAA access has remained the same. Most of that spike has come from the data being made available through AWS and through the Open Commons Consortium. So 
still have some challenges. Unfortunately, I haven't solved all of the world's problems yet. Um, so how do we select data sets? And we need people in this room right here that use Nova's data. Tell us what you need. Tell us how, what data needs to be easier for you to access. Um, how do we transfer massive data sets in real time? As Go16 goes live, that's about 1.7 terabytes of data a day. It's a 42x increase over the legacy Go system. How do we get that out as fast as possible so we can maximize the value of that? Um, the Crata ends about a year from today. What do we do after that? Uh, it's a good question. We're asking really smart people how we're going to proceed with this going forward at our collaborators. And so that is uh, something we're still working on. We don't have a great answer on that yet, but I hope to have a great answer on that soon. And we're going to have that through an empirical process that's based in actual experience as opposed to what we think works well. So what's next for the BDP? Like I said, we're still trying to figure that out. I have two minutes for questions. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to assume that I just covered it so well. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So it sounds like you guys, you guys are working through both technical challenges and then also sort of discovery challenges. Which do you feel is, is the biggest part of your, your job moving forward? Yeah, we have some technical challenges. Um, but I would say that the vast majority of our challenges are actually not technical. Um, NOAA's got a lot of really smart people in it. Uh, but this represents a major cultural shift for NOAA. Uh, we're talking about distributing data outside of a federally contained system, I and we're not distributing the gold copy. That's still being held in our archive as federal law requires. Um, but how do we overcome these technical challenges, these, excuse me, social challenges, that this is different? Uh, this is doing something a little different, and this requires a little bit different change. So um, it's a process. Uh, we have a lot of people who are in the organization that are starting to see the value of it. Um, but it's a process, and I would say that the social challenges is definitely the one we're going to be working through going forward. Any other questions? Okay, well, I am at time. Um, I'll be around through the rest of today and actually through most of the weekend as I'm really excited to see the hackathon. So I'm really excited to see what comes out. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks so much.